Hey there, content creator. You're probably wondering right now what professional wrestling can teach you about storytelling. And you're thinking, this isn't relevant for me, but that's where you're wrong. And if you keep watching, you'll find out exactly why. Okay, ridiculous intro aside, professional wrestling can teach you a ton about storytelling and characterization. It can give you the tools to get your point across incredibly quickly, and that's what I was trying to do in the intro. Characterization is very simply the art of building a character, and pro wrestling does that very, very quickly. And learning how pro wrestling does it will make your characters more engaging and make your content better, no matter what kind of content you create. So first thing to bear in mind, is you are a character. If you're the creator, you are the character. If you're creating something with people or with actors, they are the characters, but always there is a character. Even if you're writing or doing a podcast, you're playing a character. Now the character might just be you or an exaggerated form of you, like I am here. I'm not this on all the time, but that's what you're doing. You're building a character. So the character I wanna build is I wanna engage you about content creation. I wanna talk to you about the things I've learned about content creation and try to help you from some of the experiences I've had. That's a simple character, right? So what can you do to build a simple character really quickly? Well, let's go to pro wrestling for advice. Because the second a pro wrestler walks out onto the stage, before they even get to the ring, you know exactly who they are. You know if they're the hero or the villain. So how? They engage with the audience in different ways. The hero engages with the audience on their level. So can you do that with your audience? Can you engage with them on their level? Can I, if I come in and say, I am a content creator like you, that's great. I, you and me immediately have a relationship. I have done the things that you are doing now. I have tried making videos, making podcasts, a little bit of everything. I'm sure you have too. Now we have a rapport. Now you understand where I'm coming from and I understand where you're coming from and there's a relationship. But sometimes you come out and be the villain and you say, listen, you don't know anything about this topic and I'm here to teach you. And those are two very distinct approaches, but wrestling does them really well because the hero walks out on stage and he's in the local team's jersey and he says, hey everybody, I'm here in Cincinnati. I love the Bengals. I love this city. I'm here to show off for you because you guys are awesome. And the villain says, hey, you're all morons and I'm gonna go beat your hero right here in your hometown, in their hometown, because you all suck so much and I hate you so much. And there are advantages and disadvantages to both approaches. Let's talk about the hero first. So the hero is much simpler. The hero engages with the audience. So if you don't engage with your audience, you will fail as a content creator in whatever you're making. Even if you're making a corporate training video, if you can't get the people watching to care, you have failed at making the piece of content you're making. So wrestling can teach you to do that really, really quickly because the character walks out and immediately engages with the audience because they know what the audience is. If you know your audience, you know how to engage with them and you know how to get them on your side very quickly. So what are they interested in? What are their problems? What are they trying to learn? If a crowd in wrestling's problem is that they don't like the bad guy, the hero's there to solve it. Conversely, the villain is really interesting because their job is to create the problem, to be the problem, to instigate debate and anger and emotion. And that can be really powerful too, but it depends on what you're making. But let's use two examples to figure out how wrestling can inform your content. The first, let's think about a gaming YouTube channel. You're a gamer, you wanna show off your skills that you've learned through practice in one specific game. You've worked on it for a long time. You engage with the audience by saying, hey, I've been playing this game for ages and I've been struggling with this specific section. Now you, your audience is like you, they know you, they understand your struggles, and you've set up a problem that they also have. And now you can deliver the, the solution to that problem and you beat the villain, which is level 10 of whatever game you're playing. That's an immediate, quick way to kind of build an audience. And there's a second part of that which is in there and it's building stakes. We'll get to that a little later because wrestling does that incredibly well too. Now, what else does wrestling do well? Villains. Villains are always fantastic in wrestling because they can very quickly make an audience hate them. They can walk out and slap the hero sign out of the kid's hand. They can go and just cheat and steal. And it's fantastic. It's very fun and very vaudeville and very entertaining. And there's still a lot you can learn from it. So you can imagine that gaming channel, if they are really good at a game, they can talk down to their audience. They can entertain their audience by being the villain, by being like, I am the best at this. And all you watching, you'll never be as good as me. You can complain in the comments and in chat, but you are not as good as me and you never will be. And that makes the audience like, not angry, but entertained by the adversarial nature of the relationship you've created. And that's been done to great success on Switch with some gamers and it can be really entertaining. Just remember, your specific niche might not suit it. 
Now the second example is a corporate training video. How the heck can pro wrestling inform your corporate training video? But if you think about creating, say, two characters, one of which is good at doing a task and one of which is bad at doing the task, that's dull and boring. How do we make that interesting? Well, make one of them good at the task because of the things they do and the way they relate to their coworkers. They go and ask for help from the people around them. They read the training manual. They high five their colleagues for helping them. They are engaging, relatable. They are the hero. And the villain is the person who doesn't do any of that, ignores their colleagues, is mean to them, plays pranks to them, knocks their stuff off the desk, does generally villain stuff. And immediately using those pro wrestling techniques of showing off who the hero and villain is, you've created a more entertaining corporate training video, which are incredibly boring. So you can use those simple characterization tools that pro wrestling teaches to make your content way more interesting, way more quickly. And remember, no matter who the character is, whether you're writing articles or whether you're making a podcast, you can use these techniques to build the character that you are, whoever the person that you're creating the character with is. Just make sure they're immediately understandable and simple characters, unless you're trying to make something really complex, you're going to film school or something. In that case, go nuts, take your time, make Breaking Bad, take forever to get to your point. That's what those media are for. But when you're making something sweet and short and simple, stick to the pro wrestling technique of building character instantly. Second thing pro wrestling can teach you that is going to be incredibly useful in making content is that it instantly and effectively not only creates, but also raises stakes. So we'll start with creates the stakes. So you see the wrestler walk out wearing the championship belt. You know this is a championship match. And you know the villain who walks out next and is booed by the crowd, eerily eyeing up the belt and looking at it and thinking, oh, I'm going to take that. That's instantly a story. The, the hero wants to keep their title and the villain wants to take it. Or reverse it, the villain has the title, he jealously guards it and the hero's like, I'm gonna get that because I've worked so hard and whatever direction you go, you've instantly created simple stakes. And you don't even need the belt for it. You can have the villain come out and attack the hero from behind. So how do they raise the stakes? They take that belt and remind you, if it's a championship match, that it is on the line. How do they do that? They make it part of the match. The referee takes it from the hero, carefully places it somewhere safe. Then the, the villain steals it from the referee, bashes the hero with it. Not only reminding us they're a villain and sticking to that characterization stuff, but tying in the stakes directly to their actions, which is an amazing way to tell a story. And wrestling's great at little hints at what's going on like that. It constantly builds up the stakes, always reminding you of them, always reminding you what's on the line. And you can see this in some really successful YouTubers channels. Mr. Beast constantly reminds you what's on the line. Like we'll literally turn to the camera or remind you what the point of the video is. That retains your viewer. And you'll see the characterization continue throughout. People don't change and drop their characters. They continue playing to the crowd. The hero will still be an earnest fighter. And the villain will always try to cheat and sneak their way out of things. They'll roll out of the ring, parade about and say, oh, you can't hit me. They'll hide behind the referee. They will remind you that they're the villain all the time. But that also builds the stakes in the story. We hate the villain even more for doing those things. And we need the hero to win. Create yourself as the hero and make sure you position the problem as something that is solvable, but requires work and effort and time. And you have to keep trying and trying. If you're beating that level in that video game, raise the stakes by playing the level on camera and failing repeatedly until you know you find that one way to succeed or you show that one way to succeed. It builds the stakes. Maybe even you, the expert, can't do it. And if you're playing the villain, remind the viewers why you're the villain. Remind them that you are the bad guy because of the things you do and the things you say. Don't start off going, oh, you're a moron, you don't know what you're doing, and then drop it and just start talking to them like normal. Stick to the character. Characterization creates and maintains the stakes. So if you can combine both of those things, you'll very successfully tell a simple story. And that's what wrestling is. It's a simple story told well. They don't mess around, they don't waste your time. They say, here's the hero, here's the villain, here's why you should care, and we're gonna keep reminding you of all of those things. And then when we get to the conclusion, it's immensely satisfying, it's a huge payoff, because we have earned that payoff by watching all of this drama unfold. If you can do that, you'll make your content so much more engaging, so much quicker, because that's what professional wrestling does best and you can steal that technique for what you do.